players. Ladies and gentlemen from Scotland, the winner of five ranking events is literally on fire. It's Stephen Maguire! And ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the ace in the pack, the winner of eight ranking events, the reigning and defending players' champion, it's John Chad Trump returns to Landidno to defend the Players' Championship that he won last year by beating Marco Fu 10-8 in the final, making four centuries in that match. Judge to break. Thank you, the first frame. Judge Trump to break. Trump, however, has lost four of his last six matches in various ports of call on the circuit, so... He'll be conscious of the need to make a good start against a formidable, formidable opponent, Stephen Maguire, who ITV viewers may remember ran Ronnie O'Sullivan very close a few weeks ago in the semi-finals of the World Grand Prix at Preston, losing 6-4 after leading 4-2. Yes, real signs that McGuire is playing some good stuff again and the work has all been put in, which is everything you've got to do at this game. Anyway, the safety shot was probably not good enough. Because he must stop Judd Trump getting his hand on the table the way he pots at long range. He's always been exactly the same. Well, he seemed a bit surprised by by the way the key ball reacted there, but he's okay. Three. He's on that red. But thankfully, a little nudge on the pink and stopped the key ball from going into the side of the bunch. Four. Yes, confidence is everything, and it's safe to say that Judd's confidence is not rocketing sky high at the moment. But he has won a ranking event this campaign which counts for a lot that was the no. European Masters in Lommel Belgium in early season <coughs> he immediately followed that by getting to the Shanghai Masters final losing to Ronnie O'Sullivan Ten. that was a better shot than it looked just passing the black he was drifted a little bit further than he would have wanted this is an awkward cut back now over the top of the yellow. Well, it's a, a bit of a struggle, this break, but it's still going. And I think 13. he's on one. Always good to see him playing well. He's a very entertaining player. 14. He's reported to be very frustrated at having been unable recently to bring his practice form into the arena. So he needs 19. a good run this week to restore any confidence he may have lost. 20. Uh, well, he wouldn't be the first player to have had that frustration because uh, practice is, is one thing. As we know, getting out there and doing it on the match table is another. Um, I think sometimes he... he you must feel a little bit like there's less pressure when you're struggling in practice. You can surprise yourself how well you play out under the lights.
36. He's never quite had the cue ball control of the likes of O'Sullivan or Ding Jinhui, who of course meet this evening in uh, the quarter-finals. He's always had a loose cue ball, but he's made up for it with the way that he knocks in pots and all 41. angles. 41. Yes, using the rest 42. as a right-handed player, as yep. some of the players, the likes of Mark Allen and Barry Hawkins do. Never completely understood how that's possible, but he always does it very well. The other thing that he can do, Clive, is he can win frames very quickly, and we feel like we've only just started this match, but he's a million miles away from 49. being 1-0 up. They've been playing four minutes, and it's fifty, almost over this frame. This is a very encouraging start from Trump. Well, Trump has got such a quick eye. He's down into his shot and fired. 57. Last week in Bucharest, he beat Luca Brussel 4 0 in 40 minutes with an average shot 58. time of 12 seconds. Yeah, I noticed that as well. And uh, I think that he was dipping under 12 seconds apparently at one point in that match. And that is remarkably quick when you don't have to play quickly. You know, 63. Not any kind of shot clock but uh, when you're in rhythm I guess 64 might take more time than you need to 51. thing is you don't have that sort of average shot time if you're 71. drawn into tactical battles but this 72. is uh, one visit snooker for Trump only five minutes for this break so far and he's well past the winning post. 78. Oh, this really is good. 79. Already very enjoyable break to watch. And it's still going after that shot. 85. 86. Looks to me as if he's been putting in the hours. 93. In the defence of his his title, a very coveted title, I think, in snooker. This one, relatively new tournament, but the format is for all the leading players, the informed players, and he is in form. <laughs> Terrific. Century 518 of his career, and we're talking about one of Sullivan reaching a thousand centuries. I'm certain that Trump will because he's so much younger and so many good years in front of him. 106. 110. This really is outstanding. We've seen some good snooker so far this week, but I think all of a sudden it's only a frame, but he's moved things up at a notch here. 121. A dazzling total clearance of 128 in 6 minutes 45 seconds. Judd Trump leads Stephen Maguire 1-0. 19. Thank you, frame two. Stephen Maguire to break. Well, Stephen Maguire has had to remain in his chair throughout the first frame which comprised a total clearance of 128 from Judd Trump yes it was a safety shot that didn't find its way under the bolt cushion which we know is what you're meant to do but it wasn't the worst shot I've ever seen it was his only shot oh this is terrific what a top that is he's not on the black I wonder if he'll take a risk it's a very thin cutback it is on, but this really is thin. Well, good pot. Cubal lost a little bit. He couldn't claim to have good control over that. Eight. A 
Well, that red only just went. There was not a lot of room there. And look how he's played this. He's played in and out of bolt. It's another fine pop. It was just a gap between the red and the black. Twelve. Thirteen. Thank you. Well, we're seeing very clearly how well Trump can play when he's in a streak of form. But maybe we'll get an answer to the question a little bit later on of how well he's playing when the frames get bogged down 20. rather more. Well, he's not allowing that possibility to happen in this frame and a half, is he? Yeah, it's two long pots. And 21. I guess what you said that he feels about maybe he's practicing well and he's not doing any damage in matches. What normally happens, Clive, is that someone is then made to suffer when it all clicks into gear. 26. At the moment, could be like that. The red could have gone in off. He wouldn't have deserved it to happen. 27. And then he's got the balls really <clears throat> open. This is as good a start as you could ever see, this frame and a half. Can't play better than this. Forty six pots pots made out of forty six attempted. Thirty two. Thirty three. Yes, the other thing is we've seen players just take a while to get to grips with the table, the bed of the table, the pace. Cushion speeds have been foxing one or two players at the start of a match, but none of that here. Thirty nine. 40. Oh, Snoop is a very difficult game, but it's been made to look ridiculously 47. easy here. 48. 48. And could go into the four reds. It doesn't necessarily have to. I understand fully why he wouldn't do. And he got a kick there. That yeah. definitely made a bad sound. I thought the cue ball jumped fractionally as well. 55. Yeah. The cue ball jumped up in the air. One of the few kicks that we've seen this week. I think he's queuing well enough for it not to have actually made any great difference to the shot. The cue ball travelled far enough for the next red. 56. And again, two reds out in play, which means he hasn't got to disturb the four unless he really feels the shot is on. It's all about winning the frame and then concentrating on clearing the table. Yep, that's the sensible way of playing it. Frame is not yet one, but it will be within, I think, two shots here. Red, 63. high value colour all over. What a start. 64. Well, that one only just struggled in. 65. I suppose one could say that he's playing so well that he could get just a little bit overconfident and take a shot well within his normal 70. ability, rather for granted. <coughs> but he hasn't done 71. that yet. There's a tremendous opening, red and the black, thin black. Oh, this really is spellbinding stuff at the start of a match. Just what Maguire did not want to see. Trump in full cry. Joe Trump, 78, and the break. So, with that break of 78, Judge Trump proceeds to a 2 0 lead without Stephen Maguire scoring. Okay, Joe. Thank you, frame three. Judge Trump to break. Judd Trump leads Steve Maguire 2-0 after only 13 minutes play. Operating at 11 seconds per shot. 
Yes, and that was a five and a half minute frame. And you don't see too many of those knocking around. That is a very quick frame of snooker. Someone's going to say, well, didn't Ronnie make a 147 in five minutes 20? Well, of course he did, but the frame lasted longer than that in total. Just got to leave him nothing at range because Trump looks like he's about to devour any long pot. Well, if he looks at the one to the left cushion, I think that would be a tough one. Well, that's a good safety shot, it's well angled around the table. I can tell you that on table two, Anthony McGill has taken the opening frame against John Higgins. Well, if he's playing up and down here, it's a very difficult shot. Now, the containing shot that was always the peril was the double kiss. He just glanced the red. It looks like he's got away with it. I think Steve Maguire just wants to have a pot to go at, just wants to get. Trump sitting in his chair rather than him sitting in his own chair. <coughs> Maguire, of course, is one of those players who's uh, keeping a very keen eye on the rolling world rankings. He wants to finish in the top 16 prior to the World Championship to avoid World Championship qualifying. He is in the China Open, which is the remaining ranking tournament after this which Trump is not incidentally he lost in the qualifying round to Jack Jones of Wales one of the few surprising losses Trump has suffered this season Sam Craigie and Stuart Carrington are also well down the rankings have also beaten him Chuck that nicely. His first successful pot of the day. Ben Williams looking to see if the pink will go on its own spot. Otherwise, highest available looks to be the brown. He seems to think it does go on there with that little marker that he used. Seven. And there is a possibility of a plant. He looked at the two reds at the right corner, but he doesn't really need to be worrying about that yet. It might come into play a bit later on in the break. Eight. Those two reds are certainly lined up to the right corner. And Maguire is, is on to it. There you see it. I'm not saying he'll play on them, but it's something he could think about. They're bang in line. If he was right behind them, despite there being a gap between the two reds, I think he would probably get the shot. Fourteen. To them didn't catch them quite flush the reds have 19. split but he's kind of lost the cue ball a bit from the middle of the table he wanted a, 
I think a more full-on contact with the pink there. His next red to the middle is not ideal. But he's played 20. it well. He was able to miss the pink on the way through. Very good recovery shot. Just because Trump is playing so quickly, it doesn't mean that Maguire has to. But in his calm, measured way, he's already done enough to suggest that he's in pretty good form. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. And all three frames have started with a slight safety error, not a major one, and the player has knocked in a long pot and won the frame from it. It's not happened quite yet, but frame three went the same way. Steve Maguire with a red to the left corner pocket. Didn't get immediate position, but he's kept the break going very well. 42. 43. A little bit thinner than he would have preferred, and awkward bridging as well. I wonder if he thought that he might have the pink as a further option, but that red went to cover it, so only the black and... Well, this is not a very nice shot queuing over a red. 42. Well, him very pleased to have got that shot out of the way and 50. remain in good position. Fifty-one. Now he has to finish the job. Fifty-eight. Just going to keep his concentration here. Likely to cannon into the pink. He's going to make sure it's a good one. Fifty-nine. Yeah, that's okay. This break has been a bit more complex than two, where Trump just looked to be shelling peas in those first two frames. The way he found the whole. Break building method so simple. This has taken a bit more work. He's not quite over 66. the line yet either. Red in any colour will get him his first frame. And this is not really the one he wanted to play on the left. And he's slightly hampered by the pink on any other red that he plays. One more good shot. Seventy-nine. 
67. that that one went in off the jaw because that was the ball. 70. Which means that Trump needs snookers, although I doubt that'll come into the equation. And with the early stages of a match here, Clive, but it's already looking to be a little gem of a match. Terrific standard. Difficult to imagine it could be much better. Trump breaks of 128 and 76. 78. To take the first two frames. McGuire replying. Seventy-nine. With what looks like developing into a century of his own. Yeah, just twice he's played shots off the bottom cushion and been surprised how much the cue was bounced off it. I think that cushion was playing slowly earlier in the week, but he's recovered from that situation twice. He's kept 86. that man in his chair. 87. Ninety. Ninety one. Make it about six times he's been out of position in this break, which is unlike Steve Maguire, but He's dug himself out of a slight hole on each occasion. 96. Red in colour for a century. 97. Shot bringing up the century shows just how well Maguire is queuing. 102. Yeah, I'm just thinking exactly the same. He hit it beautifully. The kind of shot any player would practice, but you would never see a ball hit any more sweetly than that. 107. One hundred and sixteen. One hundred and twenty two. Absolutely superb. One hundred and twenty nine. didn't pop a ball in the first two frames, but he copied thirty six in succession. In that one, and with that break of 129, he reduces his arrears to 2-1. <coughs> Thank you, frame four. Stephen Maguire to break.
Just under 28 minutes for the first three frames. A century on either side. And the prospect of a great match developing. Yes, just wonder if that will slightly get into or affect the rhythm of Judd Trump, who started absolutely uh, like a runaway train, knocking everything in. Quite a long way out with that uh, attempted pot from long distance. Yes, and didn't get back to bulk either. He's got to watch here if he does play this queuing awkwardly. The waistcoat could just land on top of a ball, even if it wasn't to move, it would be a foul. Uh, for that reason, he just played the up and down. Didn't even think about the pot, didn't fancy it. Now he's got to keep some pressure on Judd Trump. Wasn't the best of shots, though. Can't leave Trump those, we've seen that already. So, a surprising shot from Maguire to play what he played and leave that. Five. Could only rely on playing ball striking there because the cue ball was under the side cushion, so couldn't avoid coming in the blue. And Ten. that positional shot has not turned out as well as he'd hoped. No, I think he played on the red directly above the black. If he could have got straightish on that, he would have been well away. Hardly anything being missed in this match. Both players have missed one pot, which they've gone for. That wasn't a missed pot, that was just a, a safety Good shot. Job. Ten. say that cue ball has got to be under that cushion rail for both players it seems nobody likes playing tight on the alt cushion there isn't a player I've seen that enjoys it from there but when they can get their hand on the table it adds a lot to the chances of potting balls at range and Judd's got to make sure he does the same here Well, at least it was a natural, maybe with a, just a touch of left-hand side to get round behind the back of the black. He nearly knocked that red into the middle pocket, actually. It's a question of whether the red up the table is there enough of the potting angle. He was looking on anxiously, Maguire. And it's one of those where it just could be enough of the red available to hit. That means the pot would go in. Very tight, this. I think the natural angle would be to overcut it. Just get a... Oh, look at it there, it's just an edge sticking out.
Well, he's played it with left-hand swerve. What a shot that is. And also, the running side and parted on the cue ball when he gets the pot, naturally brings it around for the blue. That was a terrific shot. Running side means that uh, the cue ball accelerates off a cushion. Check side, as its name implied, checks. Six. Seven. He's already eyeing up the red that's by the black. That's the one he really would love to play on. Oh dear. A little bit a little bit wayward. He's on the, the other one, but I'm pretty sure he played further down to get the red by the black. But uh, no doubt it's still 13. in his plans. <clears throat> that would clear the black and well, make you think that he could win the frame from this visit. Take two, he's got there this time, it's perfect. 18. 19. Oh, he looks incredibly sharp, I mean, he's had a mid-season dip of form, there's absolutely no doubt about that, and you know, there were times when his frustrations have been evident. The match where he lost to Stuart Carrington, he just, just launched his cue through the balls when he could still win the match 26. in the last frame, which... It was a bit unfortunate, but he looks to be back to 27. somewhere near his best. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Very good shot. Didn't have a huge angle on that, but he managed to force it. Made it into an area where it was three reds that were going to be potable. Take your pick. 43. And again, now the question of getting this frame over within this visit. That wasn't the best of shots. Might decide to just screw into the two reds here. Beautiful. Beautiful shot. Fifty. Fifty-one. And he's absolutely whizzing around the table here, isn't he? Lovely to see these shots, and uh, this 12 seconds per shot means that uh, not a lot of thinking time. Great rhythm he's in. And this is another frame that's as good as over. Looking across the other table and saying, what's going on? We're two frames ahead of you. 57. 58. <clears throat> Anything I could think is Stephen Maguire will surely... Uh, he can't be too disappointed with how he's playing. Made a terrific total clearance, 129. Sometimes 63. you just have to accept that the other guy's playing too well. 64. But in the best of 11, there's a lot of snooker to be played after the mid-session interval. Delightful shot to separate the red from the 69. pink. 69. 70. Seventy-six. Seventy-seven. It looks very much as if the third century of the match is coming up. Trump and Maguire have made one each. Eighty-four. 
85. Ninety. Ninety-two. And we've had only 38 minutes play as the fourth frame draws to a close. Ninety-five. It takes a lot of hours, a lot of practice in dark snooker rooms to get to the standards that we're seeing here this afternoon from both players. Ninety-nine. Might be gifted players, but... Lots of practice. Well, Another century. Five. Wonderful stuff. One hundred and ten. Simply brilliant. Judson clears with one hundred and seventeen and leads Stephen Maguire by three frames to one at the mid-session interval. Well, the defending champion shows he has no intention of relinquishing his crown here in Landidno. We'll hear what Joe and Alan made of that masterclass after the break. Phenomenal start, you have to say, by both players. Yep. And Trump's 117 break in the fourth frame, Good which was his second century of the match, was also his 60th century of the season. And in some quarters, people say he's struggling. Yeah, tremendous match so far. It's just both players looking absolute fine form. Just not really a lot Stevie can do about it. He's just got to really just uh, knuckle down and try and just stop Judd having a look at anything, really. It's during periods such as that. Well, you just realise how good the top guys are. The word brilliant is not out of place. But Maguire's just as capable of spells of heavy scoring. The match is by far from over. One. Can tell you, by the way, about a very interesting story developing on table two where Anthony McGill has just taken a 3 0 lead over John Higgins. The story of the third frame there Higgins was 51 0 ahead. McGill made a really well crafted run of 38 and eventually won it on the late colours. First chance to Maguire after the interval. An attacking safety from Judd, but just not one towards the pocket. Eight. Good chances for Stephen. Pots this red, frees the black into both pockets, and uh, there's already four or five loose reds, so. No. Good chance for Stephen. Close the gap. Sixteen. Seventeen. I know, Joe, that you've also had a very good relationship with Stephen Maguire. He's one of those players that, when he's at the top of his game, he looks a world beater. Yeah, I... Just got absolute ultimate respect for Stephen's game. I, 24. I really don't like the phrase underachiever. But I just I prefer to say like just hasn't won as much as he should. He's, when he's at his best, he's just there's no weaknesses. 25. Game's just so strong. He played a loose one there though. <coughs> just wrong side of the blue. Two choices. Just leave himself a longest red or take the white in and out of bulk. He's done both. He took the white in and out of balk and left himself a longest red. 30.
31. One of the cliches on the snooker tour is that the, the rankings don't lie. But I think with Stephen Maguire, they do. Currently 18th, he's definitely better than that. Yeah, recovered that situation nicely. But running out of loose Great reds here. now, so probably look for an angle off this red. Get himself into the pack and he's still got that little red to the right there. So into the reds, knowing full well should be on that red. Got to make sure he hits these with enough pace just to not get stuck in the reds. So tightly bunched there, so just needs to make good contact with the red, probably just to the right at the bottom. Not ideal. He's got a red to left centre, I think. 46. Not easy. <coughs> Bear in mind, we're deep into frame five. Those pot success percentages are extraordinary. 99% for Trump, 96 for Maguire. Between them, they've taken on 145 pots. They've missed three. Yeah, and I, I don't actually think all of them actually counted. I think one of them was judged on 78, so you can really sort of not, not count that one. David Maguire, 46. A rare error, if you can call it that, because it was quite a tricky one. Yeah, I think the reason Stephen's so disappointed there, well, obviously he's, he's looking to win the frame at that visit, but he knows the chances don't come along that often against Judd in this form, and, and the way the table's sort of sitting at the moment, no safe balls. 46 would soon be eaten up very quickly. Damage done there, but Judd's in control of this little safety encounter at the moment, and these reds won't always be tightly bunched. So it'll get more and more difficult for Stephen to find a safe spot on the table soon. Judd looks like he's eyeing this one up. Needs to be made. Not sure if the reds are touching. He might have to reverse it. too close to the first red there to make that plant so once again got the white tight under that cushion and this one's a bit more difficult for Stephen to get safe you should never compromise your strengths but I think Trump would be the first to admit that on occasions just rein yourself back a little bit the way he pots you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to play aggressive attacking snooker I think, I think that's the, the one part of Judd's game I've seen massive improvement in this season. His, his safety and tactical game really has come on. He, all right, he's maybe not quite out there with Selby and Higgins yet, but he, there's not many players he can't compete with in that department now. It looks easy enough what Judd's doing here, but he's it's, it's got to make sure he gets that white right under the cushion just to stop Stephen getting any sort of opportunity to play a screw shot back to the ball, back to the cushion. So Stephen's really limited in what sort of shots he can play here.
There's no safe place in the bulk end of the table because of the two reds sitting over the middle pocket. So it looks like once again just dead weight into this red. But like I said, the longer this goes on, the harder it's going to be for Stephen to keep finding a safe space. The balls are gradually opening up. And it's going to get harder and harder. Just imperative that Judd finds his cushion again. This time, short. Well short. Yeah, very short. He's, so he's left the tempter for Stephen. Not easy, but... But you can play it with an, an element of safety. You can go all out and top it in, which is makes the shot harder. But if he just comes back for the black, I don't there's nothing easy you can leave, Judd. One. Great shot. <coughs> Beautifully struck. These middles are really tight, so that was a great shot. I sh should knock this in and then great chance to uh, win the frame. Eight. Nine. Yep, nice little shot there, just leave himself pink to centre. Just a series of little soft stuns and screws now, just to see him over the line in this frame. And it's perhaps worth mentioning that in their early meetings, these two, Maguire very much had the... 50. Superiority head to head wise. At one point, he led 7 4 in total wins. That's been reversed now, though, 16. because Trump's won their four most recent encounters. Maguire, in fact, hasn't beaten Trump since the quarter final of the 2015 Australian Open down in Bendigo. Gold mining country, that is. And this would be solid gold for Maguire, a victory here especially given the World Championship qualifying implications. Yeah, big match for Stephen, but they're all big matches at this stage of the season. You know, I don't think Stephen's probably looking at rankings. He's, he just comes into every event looking to win the tournament, and obviously that, the rankings take care of themselves then. But he'll, he'll be feeling OK about this match, I think. You know, he knows Judd's in great form, but he hasn't done, hasn't done anything wrong himself, so... Still lots to play for. Twenty one. Twenty two. Sixty eight points the difference. Sixty seven on the table, so Trump needs a snooker. Make that a couple, and with the addition of this elementary red, it's going to be 3 2. Another clean and rapid frame. 29. Thirty-six. Thank you. Thirty-seven.
44. Forty-five. You often see one player absolutely excel in a match, but this is one of those rare occurrences and one of those beautiful occasions where two players meet each other simultaneously 52. in top form. Fifty-eight. Maguire, fifty-eight, and the front. So, with breaks of forty-six and fifty-eight, Steve Maguire dominates frame five. He trails by just a single frame at three-two. Now back to table one, where it's a lot tighter. And the standard has been exemplary from both. Yeah, really high enough into a real good match, this one. We have, normally in the best of 11, you'll get one or two frames where the player who looks like he's going to win it doesn't. It's normally a turning point, but we haven't had that yet today. Every frame's been very clean cut. I'm sure we'll get one, one big frame, one big moment. One. Nice shot from Chad there. Didn't take any unnecessary risks of finishing touching ball on the brown. Just made sure he had it. Left Stephen in a bit of trouble. There's not too many hiding places here. That easy. Be a little bit careful. Might end up playing the two cushion clip back up to Bulk. Always a slight risk of that one. You normally edge on side of missing it all together first time, but got it absolutely spot on. Yes, and with the ancillary benefit there of opening the red. So if Trump does make a mistake here, they are pre-developed, as they say. Nice return, though. Very nice indeed. And finding the gap between brown and yellow. <laughs> Superbly weighted. Yeah, it seems odd to say with the pot success so high and the breaks they're knocking in, but I think this match could could really depend on who sort of plays the more telling safety. So we know they're both in good touch when they get in. It's, it's about creating that chance to get in. One thing that's really encouraging, I think, going forward in the week, the table seems to be playing a lot more responsive now than on days one and two. Yeah, definitely. That back cushion looks like it's uh, sort of come a bit more to life now and it doesn't seem to be trapped in the white so much. There you go. That good safety from Judd. That's what, ma that's what makes all the difference, just getting that white tight under that ball cushion. Just makes it that much tougher. <coughs> Looking to play the more difficult red here. This is awkward, but obviously it gives him better position on the pink. It's definitely a tougher pot. I think I'd personally prefer the other one, but he's obviously in confident, aggressive mood today. The second red we've seen to that pocket come up short this week. Mark Selby did the same thing. And now Trump, although that one, mitigating circumstances, he had to be very delicate for position. 
Yeah, at first it looked like a big mistake from Judd. Obviously, it was missing the pot, but got Stephen in a whole heap of trouble here. And I know Stephen very well. You don't, you don't like playing negative shots, so he'll be looking to try and play something that's on the positive side. But what it is, I just don't know at the moment. There's, there's not a lot of room down there where it's safe somewhere in the jaws of the yellow pocket but then he leaves this red to bottom right corner yeah Judd unintentionally he's got Stephen in a whole world of trouble here I don't know if he's looked at it yet maybe just go just this side of the pink off one cushion with a lot of side and try and knock that red in over the middle Hasn't looked at it yet. It's a it's a possibility, but obviously it's a very tough shot. Maybe that red's not right over the middle, Phil. Maybe this is a lot thinner than what it actually looks. Well, well, well. Bow, gonna miss. I think Stephen there, Maguire, Maguire threw the dice, and they've come up with two sixes. Yeah, he def definitely took a chance there, Stephen. I, I think he tried to get the white more into the jaws of the yellow pocket, but obviously left Judd a real tempter there. He had to take it on and just just misjudged it slightly. So chance for Stephen if he can just get on a colour. Oh, he's had a bit of a flyer there, I think. One. He needs another one now so he can knock the brown in the middle. Yeah, definitely taking this on. Big shot. Reds are already split. A big shot this brown. Stephen Maguire, one. Yeah, you can see we're getting to the sort of business end of this match now. There's mm -hmm. a lot more on these pots. Wouldn't expect Stephen to miss that normally, but with the way the balls are situated, that was a high pressure pot, that one. One. Nice shot from Judd, clever shot. Always a chance of just candling one of them reds there and staying on the black. Always had the pink to centre. Judd Trump, one. What's happened, Phil? Someone spiked their tea in the interval, I think. Well, the Miss Black really was entirely unexpected, especially given the way he's played so far. Yeah. And that's a real jolt to the system. OK, <coughs> Maguire's Brown was at least a pressure ball. The one that Trump missed, that was bread and butter. in there, Stephen. It's never nice using the spider. Just wanted to get out of the table a little bit further. I don't know if he'll be tempted into taking this blue on. If he feels he can miss the cannon on the yellow, he, it might be worth a risk, but it's a tough pot. No, 
Looks like he's going to opt for the safety here. I don't blame him. So after a couple of real unexpected misses, no damage done really. Frame very much still available, both players. Yes, and I suppose this little interlude has just reminded us Steve Maguire, what? that while they've made the game look easy, it most certainly isn't. Yeah, just having a look there, Joe. I don't think he's looking to sort of like plant this red. He's just looking to see where it's going to go when he makes contact with it. For the safety side of things. That's a good shot. Not, we could have done a little bit more, though, because Stephen, he can get to the middle of this cue ball, which could tempt him taking this red on and stun him around the back. Getting the cue ball back up to ball colour. Anywhere near the ball cushion will do if he knocks it in with the brown sitting over the pocket. Trouble here for Judd. Big trouble. He's only got a couple of reds he can actually go at. Got to be careful coming back to Bolt with the black there. And also, he needs to stay down sort of yellow side of the table as not to leave this red over the bottom left corner. Didn't want that. No, he, was in a, he was in a spot above there. It was a tricky shot. And so Maguire's third and best scoring chance of the frame. But as a previous chances at this frame, the first red, the, the pot seems easy enough. It's just, it's just getting on a colour. If you can just pot a red and get nicely on a colour, you would expect him to uh, go on and make a sizable break. Mm, a little for that. Not 100% well, sure it's exactly what he played. It was lots of colours he could have landed on there, but <coughs> black is absolutely ideal. Probably play on the red nearest to the pocket, which will free the black up into both pockets. And he's away. Eight. Nine. Not pulled up any trees by his standards this season, Maguire, but he's had a, a reasonable campaign, runner-up in the, the Riga Masters, the season opener. semi-finalist in the UK Championship. Quarter-finalist on home soil in the Scottish Open. Semi-finalist World Grand Prix. And no matter who he plays or when he plays, always a potentially dangerous opponent. He's trying to reach his fifth well, ranking event quarter final of the season here today. It would be his 49th in total. Pretty good numbers. Yeah, nice shot there from Stephen. It's 22. Screwing around off the two cushions. Absolutely perfect on this red. 
for a choice of pink or black here. 23. Can't see any problems now. Just a case of just keeping control of the cue ball, which he does very well. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Good response, though, from Stephen. It would have been easy to uh, sort of hit the panic button a little bit the way Judd was playing, but he's obviously very confident in his own form. Just bided his time. Got his chance. He's taking him. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. He had the best possible recommendation when he was coming onto the circuit. Stephen Hendry, one of our colleagues, not the most praiseful person when it comes to other players, told me many years ago, watch out for Stephen Maguire, he's going to be something special. Ronnie O'Sullivan, of course, famously said, after Maguire beat him in the UK Championship in 2004, 45. that Maguire could dominate the game for 10 years. Well, that's not come to pass. But when you get endorsements like that from O'Sullivan and Hendry, that means 46. you're pretty good. So he's always been top eight in my book, Maguire. I just think the only thing he suffers from, really, other than some of the other players, is, is the hunger side of it. I don't think... I don't think he's hungry for the tournaments all the way through the season. You know, I think he's a bit more like the older style. He just sort of gears himself up for big events. I don't think he's 53. He's hungry from start to finish. But when he finds form, it's a match for anyone. This last few months, he's played some great snooker, but unfortunately, he's run into uh, a certain Ronnie O'Sullivan at the end of the tournament and just come up short. Sixty-one. Sixty-two. I was given the assignment of interviewing <coughs> Stephen just seconds, really, after he'd lost to O'Sullivan in the semi-finals of the World Grand Prix, and he was absolutely pig-sick. Invests so much into the matches 69. that he really wants to win. Yeah, another nice shot. I, I like what Stephen's doing here today. He seems to be really focused. You know, the frame's over, but he's really intent on keeping Judd in his seat. And if, if you're looking for another century here, I've lost count today. How many there's been? 76. Well, this would be the fourth of the match. Bear in mind, it's only been six frames played. Another indication of where Maguire is on the Pantheon. 82. If he makes a century here, it would be his 381st. That's elite numbers again. 84. 87. Ninety-one. And we were talking about Stephen Hendry, 96. who he played a lot with as a teenager, and this is what Hendry used to do. Like to keep opponents in their seat, stewing. One hundred and two. Clearing up, stamping his authority as much as possible. 
foul. Well, that's a clearance in the, in the true sense of the word. From Stephen Maguire. Maguire playing some lovely, lovely snooker, and this match is an absolute treat. It's all tied up. 3 3. What a, a feast of potting we're seeing here on the seafront in Llandudno in North Wales. It's the Ladbrokes Players' Championship. Thank you, frame We've seven. We've been talking about this Good being an elite me. gathering of snooker talent, and this match underlines that fact. By the way, I'm not breaking my promise about keeping you up to date with John Higgins and Anthony McGill. They went to the interval at 4-0, of course. They've now resumed play. We'll let you know how that progresses as the match goes on. The very latest is that Higgins leads by 39 points in frame five. And you get the feeling now, Joe, this is a really big frame. Trump needs to re-establish himself. Yeah, definitely. You'd, you'd say Judd has more to uh, be a bit concerned about how the two of them. You know, you wouldn't have thought after 13 <coughs> minutes of play today that we'd be sitting at three each. But Stephen's done really well to hang on in there. And uh, well, he's not just hung on in there. He's, you know, he's competed just just not at the same speed as Judd does it, but he's scoring wise. He's making the same sort of breaks and he's not missing. So very, very evenly matched, all to play for. Yeah, that was one of them sort of shots to nothing. They're, on, they're only shots to nothing if you get close to the pot. He missed that one by a little way, which meant he caught the red on the way back. This is this needs queuing nicely. Oh no, just slightly across that one. This is what happens, is lack of table time. All these shots get harder and harder the longer you spend in your chair. Careless from Stephen now. I think he's left Judd a chance at this red and he can swing the white round, get back up to Bulk. Yeah, safety was more important as opposed to the part in that shot. Advantage Judd. Slightly over hit, <coughs> no real damage done, just means that no pressure on Judd's safety. But I've not played it too good, this is probably the first frame today we've seen where the balls have just starting to go a bit untidy. Well, the red is adjacent to the pocket, of that there's no doubt. But that doesn't mean to say that this is easy. Mind you, he's got tremendous cue power, Trump. But you have to pot the ball. And even then, he didn't hit the white ball as cleanly as he normally does. Hitting a bump in the road, as they say. Yeah, he didn't quite get the fizz on that one, did he? He didn't quite time it perfectly. I didn't think he needed to play the real deep screws. I think the black goes into left corner. There's quite a nice sort of window there between the two reds to land on the black. Would have made the pot a lot easier. But it just shows he's not feeling quite so confident as he did at the start. Which is understandable. His opponent's not missing. Keep him in his seat.
players over the best of 11 frames will play countless shots, but it's always one or two that stick in the mind, either for positive or negative reasons. And at the moment, I think the one negative for Trump was missing the black in the previous frame when he got a really good opportunity. Hasn't potted a ball for actual playing time over 18 minutes. Yeah, it's an interesting stat, isn't it, when you consider he won two frames in 13 minutes. Sometimes this game really does amaze you. Looking to get the white in behind the green here. This is a good attempt. Yes, it's a nice shot. I think Stephen can see the red closest to the bottom left pocket, but he's going to have to make good contact of it. Very easy to catch these a little thick. They couldn't be intended, but he very happy with that. The same sort of problem facing Judd now. Played that with bags and bags of check side to straighten that cue ball up to stop it careering into them two reds to the right of the table. Tough shot. Interesting little safety battle now. It was obviously a very simple, what we call a dump shot, if Stephen decides to play that, but you know, players at this level don't really like playing next. It doesn't offer yourself much advantage in the frame, just, just guarantees you another shot. So it'll always be like their last choice if they can't get back to Bulk. Choice now for Judd. Play down the left-hand side of the table, try and get in behind brown and yellow. Play this red closest to him. And try and nustle in behind the green. All about personal choice, really, how he sees the shot. very good just not quite got the line but still another another tough safety facing Stephen So frame six was the lengthiest of the match by some distance at 20 minutes. Here we've been playing for nine minutes and a ball yet to be potted. Yeah, Stephen can't really see a way back here. He, once again, he can play the, the containing sort of dump shot. But he, will, he will be leading, leaving a red to left centre this time. So more reluctant to play it. I think he's looking to get a real really really thin edge on this red could easily go wrong this one and it has done Judd's continuous good safety there has forced the error for now 
Not potted one for a little while, but it's a nice easy one to get going. Get his rhythm back. One. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not sure Judd's had too much of a look here. I think putting this pink is going to go on the black spot and possibly tie them both up. Seven. So you have to concentrate on the blue for a little while. I don't think... I don't think Judd was too aware that was going to pop on there. Eight. Yes, you have to be a lateral thinker when you're playing snooker, and sometimes even the very best make small mental lapses which can be quite big in terms of circumstance and consequence Thirteen. yeah it just means this breaks not straightforward keep going up for the blue What's in Judd's favour here, though, is if he does get 14. wrong side of the blue, only one balk colour's on its spot, so it's easy to go in and out of balk. But he's finished wrong side there, but not, but not enough, so he's a bit too straight, so he'll be leaving himself a middle distance red next. This has all come about, really, from playing on the pink off the first red. That was a quality shot, not just to pot the red, but to 20. swing the cue ball wide enough to avoid contact with other reds. Just a pity, again, not on the right side of the blue. Yeah, and unfortunately for Judd, he's just, he, even though he's coming the right, the wrong side, it's, it's, he's almost spot on which means he can't 25. play in and out of balk he's a bit too straight so once again faced with another one of these nasty little mid distance reds he's really got to time this one nice get the work on the cue ball yeah they just don't he just can't keep potting them as, as good as Judd is he just good can't keep knocking 25. them immissable reds in you know you've got to get nice and tight with your cue ball make the pots as easy as possible Very aggressive shot choice there from Judd. Didn't have to take that on. And once it was one of them, again, if he'd, if he'd got very close to the pot or knocked it in, he probably would have found the gap, but it was a tough pot. And given a golden chance now to Stephen, get back in this frame. One. <coughs> well, he's on the blue, but not into the pocket that he intended again a rather ferocious bounce yeah but from a snooker player's point of view that's a when it just runs past the blue like that it leaves you dead straight into a corner pocket it's, it's almost as easy as playing it into a middle so <coughs> slight bit of good fortune there Stephen six he's in prime position now just try and go about the best way of uh, freeing up the pink and black now just looking it's not going to be easy. They're all sort of covering each other. Seven. 
Seven. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think he meant to just glide past that red 12. to leave himself a choice of red into centre. Or this red that he's on, but straighter into the corner. So Once again, should have no problem potting the red, but he needs to play a very precise positional show here. He'd like to just pot the red and bounce up between, in between the pink and the red and land on the black, or even screw across, nudge the red above the pink to stay on the black. That'd be absolutely perfect. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. 13. Yeah, a little grimace there from Stephen. I'm not sure if he's just... If he hasn't gone through far enough, he'd be absolutely disgusted by that shot. I think he just assumed the pink was going back on the black spot, which it is. Nineteen. Yeah, he may have even he may have actually been even holding the pink the black spot there. That would have sent the pink up the other end, and then he could have gone red black. But, oh, that was a miscalculation there from Stephen. Yes, his hopes were raised when Ben Williams, the referee, put his plastic implement on the pink spot, and McGuire must have been hoping against hope the pink did go on its own spot, but there was no room, so end of break. Relief for Trump. Stephen Maguire, 19. Yeah, left the table a bit sooner than what he intended there, Stephen. Won't be happy with that. Another one of these sort of shots to nothing for Judd, but as I've already said, you have to get close to them. That's close Stop. enough. Yes, the correct terminology, shot to nothing, but in this case, now having dropped on the green, it could be a shot to plenty. Yeah, and this, this all, it's these sort of things that hurt you as when you sit Four. in your chair, you know, if someone knocks a good red in, that's fine. You just, you accept it. But when they knock a good red in after a, a careless shot from yourself, it's, Five. it's harder to accept. A uh, big visit now for Judd. This would, this would really hurt Stephen, this one, I think, more than what's gone on before, more than the centuries. This one will be more painful. Well, that 13. was unforgivable. The missed black in the previous frame now. <coughs> and missed pink. They sting. They really do. Especially if... Maguire were to go on and win the frame. Well, Yes, it's very easy to get over your bad shots and your misses when you're not punished. <coughs> That's when they cost you. They sort of stick with you for a bit longer. But a lot of work to do with Stephen. Four reds, all safe. A few good cannons and pots required. That's a good start. Eight. With the, seven. with the black not being on the spot, these three reds are hard to get to. You can get on the blue, but the pink's sort of half covering that angle. Not a lot of room for error playing for the pink. So, tough, tough proposition facing Stephen here.
Eight. Oh, that's, that's almost almost very good. He didn't like I say, didn't have a lot of room there. Only had about three or four inches to play with. Just come up a fraction short. Fourteen. Stephen Maguire, fourteen. In the first six frames, the highest number of points scored by the loser was nine. This is the most evenly contested frame of the match so far. And the way it's gone, psychologically, without doubt, the most significant. And what a shot that was from Trump. What a contact. Yeah, made that played that very well, Judd. Stephen can hit this red, but he's got to make good contact on it. Anything thick will probably result in leaving a pot on for Judd, so Yeah, I just called it a touch thick. I think he's left Judd a sighter at this one. And all of a sudden. Three red safe a minute ago, two shots ago. Now they're all sitting ducks. So he's just lost his range slightly, Judd. They were going in, no problem at the start. Yes, at the start he was like a catamaran with a, a wet sail. Now he's in the doldrums. Another one of your sayings, Phil, I've never heard before. Funnily enough, neither have I. That was a first for me as well. But once again, that's another cracking safety shot from Judd. Absolutely perfect. He seems to have uh, changed this this match. He was, it was all about the potting in the beginning. Then now the strongest part of his game by far is the safety so he's creating the chances it's just just stop taking them for the time being yes and while over the last couple of frames his execution could be faulted his application most certainly could not very impressive the way he stuck with this mature This is a tough one. He knows full well if he's leaving the chance. Oh, wow. What a shot that is. What? That had to be absolutely as clean as a whistle to go in at that pace. That never touched the sides. What a pot at that pace. Unbelievable. Yeah, he seems to be a real determination determined look on his yeah. face now Joe he knows ball. this is a real big visit he doesn't want to go behind for the first time in the match three but that yellow going on the black spot just made this a little bit more tricky once again needs to just judge the cannon off the yellow perfectly yeah just just meant going into that yellow, Good just come. took his eyes slightly Three. off the pot. It's easily done. And once again, created another chance for himself and didn't take it. In this frame, momentum ebbing and flowing, but if Maguire could win it to take the lead for the first time, what an examination that would be for Trump. Yeah, the only potential saving grace for Judd there is that what? the yellow has, hasn't gone safe, 
but it's gone in an awkward position, especially where the, the green and the black are situated. Stephen can't just drop that yellow in because the green doesn't go into the yellow pocket, so still possible lifeline for Judd. In the background there you can see Anthony McGill going back to his chair Eight. thoroughly satisfied the fifth frame was a real marathon it looked as though he'd won it a while ago but John Higgins got the snookers he needed on the green in the end though McGill pots the blue to make it absolutely sure and so he is now 5-0 up on the multiple world champion who could have foreseen that McGill one frame away from a quarter final against Sean Murphy yeah just just fell in between shots here Stephen Black ball. Himself a awkward spot I'm not actually sure he's taking this on Stephen McGuire, yeah, eight. It's probably a clever shot in this actual state of the match. You don't want to do nothing rash and give your opponent an easy chance. So kept control of the table, freed the green. So you would just imagine whoever pots the yellow would go on to win the frame. But we've already seen this frame, a few unexpected misses. Trusting a bit to luck there, Judd, with where the yellow is going to finish. He's not been lucky on this occasion, so one good pop from Stephen. Two. Just needs this white to roll. <coughs> Just landed slightly awkward. But I think you'd expect to get this more times than not. Be the winning shot in this frame. Yes, he's five in the front, so brown and blue will leave Trump requiring a snooker. And the green was right into the heart of the pocket. Lots of bays to cover, no problem. Nine. Well, still not not an absolute formality, this one, but you can't really see this going wrong. But could have been easier. Thank you. 14. Icing on a sweet kick. How about this? Judd Trump was off to a flyer leading 3-1, but now Stephen Maguire's in front at 4-3. Two more needed to progress. John Higgins trying to pull off one of the most extraordinary comebacks of his career, currently trailing Anthony McGill by five frames to nil. McGill, of course, an opponent who he's beaten, Higgins, in four matches out of four before this this season quite a turnaround there and there's been quite a turnaround here on table one because Judd Trump Stephen Maguire to break looked a million dollars in establishing a 3-1 lead with breaks of 128 78 and 117 but since the interval Maguire's won all three frames played yeah, 
Yeah, what's, what's worrying <laughs> for Judd about that is that he's had chances in every one of them. I think Stephen went to the interval 3-1 down, but not too concerned because he hasn't done a lot wrong. But Judd's now 4-3 down and he has done quite a bit wrong since the interval. So big frame is for Judd. Really needs to get his, get his uh, shooting boots back on and... And the last two frames have taken exactly the same amount of time. Actually, ten minutes more the last two frames have taken than the first four. I think Stephen will sense that he's got Judd sort of where he wants him, really. So uh, I don't think we'll see him take on too many real risky ones now, Stephen. I think he'll just bide his time. Try and wait for Judd to make them errors. Yeah, he's a bit, a bit miffed there, Stephen. He, <coughs> the only red he could really stick was the one he played, and it's not landed too good. I think he thinks he got a bit of a big bounce off the cue ball there, which is, I think Judd would have had that red anyway, so. Big chance for Judd now. He's really got to get himself back in this match. He's just lost his way a little bit, last few frames. Eight. Nine. When he's in amongst the balls and scoring, Trump, he's a flying machine. Last week in the Romanian Masters, 14. he beat Luca Brussel 4 0 in 37 minutes. Average 15. shot time, 12 seconds, and it was 12 seconds a shot up to the interval today. That really is speedy. Yeah, that is that is frighteningly fast, isn't it? But I think there's a case sometimes when the match isn't really going your way, just to give yourself that extra one or two seconds, just to 21. Especially the shots, the big shots, you know, not to rush them and give them an extra bit of care. I think we'll see does a loose red there, a couple of loose reds, but I think we'll see Judd crunch these. He likes to get them open as quick as he can. Wow. Oh dear. Judd Trump, 22. Always, five. always the danger one. playing that shot. If you don't hit the pink full ball, there's always a chance. You can hit it half ball and going off. I suppose a little bit unlucky, but it was a, wasn't a very good shot. On the other hand, he didn't get the contact on the pink he was looking for. Once again. Leave the table a lot earlier than what he expected. One. Stephen's got no choice here. I think he's got to play into the bunch. Try and generate plenty of Q power on this, plenty of backspin. Right. Might have just have this red to left centre. If not, he count himself Eight. a little bit unfortunate there. Looking at the body language, he's not on it, so. Looking to get a real good cue boy and get Judd in a nice bit of trouble. 
first glance, it's not going to be too easy. Yeah, got to be careful here, Stephen. Got to just thread this cue ball in between the red and the pink. Oh, could take it on and knock it in the yellow pocket. Fantastic shot. That's the kind of shot that will really boost Maguire and really worry Trump. Mm, just overrun that one slightly. I don't think he was playing for the plant, but he always knew it was there as a as a saviour. He's looked perfectly set for the corner. Thirteen. Yeah, nicely played. Perfect angle on the blue. He's definitely looking strong now, Stephen. You can sense this match is there for the take in. Nineteen. Mm, again, another careless, careless positional shot. I had to be a little bit careful playing the cannon, but he'll be absolutely disgusted. Green ball. Steve Maguire, 19. Yeah, there's the little shot there, just a routine cannon. Just be disgusted with that, but did the right thing, kept his composure, made a good safety. <coughs> Another cracking red from Maguire. And what a cracking oh, clearance from Anthony McGill. He was 50 0 down in frame six against John Higgins. But the black we've just seen was the end of a 61 clearance to complete a 6 0 whitewash. John <laughs> Higgins very rarely blanked, but he was there. His second whitewash of the season. He also lost here on RTV 6 0 to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the Champion of Champions. But that result, wow, who could have predicted that? So McGill goes through to play Sean Murphy oh. in the quarterfinals. Just one more place in the last eight to be filled. It's the winner of this. We'll take on Neil Robertson. Once again, Stevens just just lost the cue ball. He's, he's, he's not missing anything, but he's just playing a few loose positions. Steve McGuire, shots. four. But like I said before, prepared to accept the bad shot, play a very good safety, just to keep Judd, keep the pressure on Judd. Just seems every time he comes to the table at the moment, Judd, he's facing problems. Yeah, 
he'd like, he'd like to somehow find a way of laying on this red on the back cushion. But going this way, if he doesn't get the pace right, there's always a chance he could just nudge it on for Stephen. He's gone twice across. That's a very clever shot. Very, very clever shot. <laughs> Best shot he's played in a little while, I think, that for Judd. That would cheer him up. Didn't have a lot of room for error there. He must have missed them two reds together by an absolute whisker. Trump's accuracy has no doubt dipped since the interval, but his attitude, A1, sticking with us really well. Waiting for things to turn. But again, too thick a contact. Yep, and like we've seen for most part of today, when the players have had their hand on the table, Seem to be knocking these long reds in. <laughs> Slightly unexpected miss there from Stephen. Fully expected him to get that one. So he's handed over opportunity for Judd. Good first pot. Well. Nicely on the blue. Earlier on in the match, you would just expect judges to take these out. No problem at all, but not so sure now. Yes, it's twofold, this visit. One, obviously, Six. to get back onto level terms, but also he would love some quality table time. Sizable break to get back in rhythm. And he's played that with the right hand. And just left himself a smidgen of angle, enough to get on the next red. Yeah, I know it was a well. simple pop, but you see it far more in the modern game, players switching hands. Massive advantage if you can do that. 13. But this is better from Judd. He's got top side of the blue each and every time so far. Mr. Cannon on the board, he gets a nice cannon on the black. Yep, not what he played. He played to just come past the black. 18. But I think he's all right. Still get this red to centre. Could have easily gone wrong, that. Nineteen. Once again, perfect angle on the blue. No real difficulty this time, just stunned down for this red. Play that one first, personal choice. Yeah, sure. Not happy with the contact there, though. Just come off a bit short. 24. Twenty-five. <coughs> and again, this is the problem. You don't finish nice on the on the object ball. Just makes that positional shot a little bit tougher. And eventually comes to an end. Judd Trump, twenty-five. Another disappointing finish for that visit for Judd. It was, at least he had the presence of mind to put the black safe. Nineteen ahead. Stephen, you can just catch the edge of this red. Come round of one, two, three, maybe four cushions. Foul. Judge from four. Well, on any normal day, you would expect Judd to knock this in 20 times out of 20. But the way the last few frames are gone, definitely missable.
Juan. So, 24 ahead. Looking for one high value colour or yellow, followed by another yellow. Tie up at four each. Yeah, played that nicely. Absolutely perfect. So, after a few misses, it's uh, game on. All to play for. Five. Yes, and the way this match has gone, making predictions would be foolish. But one thing we can say for certain, it's going to be the tightest last 16 match of the tournament. Eight. Previous to this, the closest scoreline had been a couple of six threes. Twelve. Seventeen. Trump will be feeling a whole lot better. It started out as the best of 11 frames. It's been boiled down the to the best of three. 4-4. Four, four. Everything to play for. Trump and Stephen Maguire tied at okay, four good. frames each in a race to six. Thank Trump you, to break nine. off in the ninth. Judge Trump to break. Thank you. Settle down. Well, in the studio, before the match started, I predicted 6-4 to Judd Trump, so that's still uh, a possibility, but I didn't expect it to pan out this way. Fantastic long pot from Stephen. Now, this will give us an insight into how he's feeling. If he's feeling positive, take this yellow on into the centre. Looks like he's shaping up for it. <laughs> yeah, lovely pressure pot there. He's got that look about him now. I've seen that many a time. And he's putting me Great. to the sword. Got that steely look now. Looks bang up for this. Black look like looks like it's available into this right hand corner. Plenty of room just to get on it. Oh. Tends to play up to the blue. These I think these two reds below the pack both go into left corner, so. Once he lands straight-ish on one of them, free the black. Oh, he's come up short. I'm not even sure he's on this red now. Nine. Had quite a bit of room for play there, Stephen. We won't be happy with that one. Might be tempted and red to centre if he feels he can play it with an element of safety. Oh, just grazed that. Stephen Maguire, nine. You can see the frustration there. I often see that from Stephen. He knows that was a good chance. Knuckles into cushion rail equals pain. Equals sore knuckles. Now, in fairness to Trump there, I think he had <coughs> a really bad contact. Looked like a kick to me. Maybe that contributed to the, the double kiss. But Maguire back with another chance. 
Yeah, that was unlucky for Judd. You could see the red ball just left the table when he hit it and it straightened up, which meant he oh. hit it on the way back. Very unfortunate. But Stephen, he'd be delighted to be back at the table so quick after that mistake. Again, faced with the same problem. We know the two reds above the black go into the left corner. It's not going to be easy to get there from the green. Stephen Maguire, one, four, yeah. jump, jump. Unfortunate for Stephen there, but on the other hand, I don't think he's done any damage. Unless Judd's eyeing this plant up. Oh, yeah, it's very makeable. One. Oh, big moment in the match there. We move ball, yeah. We move ball. Nice shot from Judd. Made that look easy. Stun run through. Playing on that Six. red that Stephen made a few attempts at getting on. Pot this opens up the black spot. Seven. Yeah. Again, things got slightly heavy contact. No harm done really. Gives me the opportunity now to pot this black. Screw into them two reds directly above the black. Leaving choice of reds. Just got to be a little bit careful here. I'm not sure if he can just drop this in and hold, leave himself high on the black, or if he's got to play it with a bit more pace. Nicely played. I think he's just gone far enough to be the right side of the 15. blue. straight on this red and 20 pop, roll down for the black if not hopefully the pink goes yeah pink goes this, this is a nice chance now it's all sort of come come together this break yes and all from Maguire's misfortune This is what Judd needed, though. 27. A string of pots. Oh, again. 28. Slightly yeah. heavy contact. Hasn't gone through with the cue ball, but there shouldn't be any real problem. You can pop this black. You can play it confidently, just gently, knowing he's not going to leave anything. You won't want to miss it, obviously, but it's always <laughs> nice to make the pot a lot easier when there's not that much pressure on it. Strange, though, the match where kicks have been very rare and all of a sudden we've seen three in a short space of time yeah we still don't know the reason behind it but we saw at the end of the last frame Judd called for a cup of hot water to warm his hands up so maybe the temperatures just dropped a little in the arena which could cause it Thirty six. Made sure we got top side of blue there, give that a little bit more. Needs a precise positional shot here, Judd. Yeah, not, not ideal, but again, he should be okay. Pot this red to the black, just nudge into the black, push it onto the left corner. 40. Mm, just lost it slightly. Wanted to hit nice, thicker contact on the black. 
to hold the white ball. So now he's got to go around the table, but I don't see a lot of value in going around the table here because you can't really get on one. Definite value in maybe putting the green on the side cushion here and getting a good cue ball. He's eyeing something spectacular up. Sometimes sensible trumps spectacular. Green ball. There's a time for pragmatism, and that was Four. it. Caught the green just slightly too thin, wanted to be behind the yellow more. Yeah, but good to see. Uh, I like the way he talked himself out of that black there. He, I think he knew deep down it was the wrong shot. Played the correct shot, just like you say, just slightly the wrong context on the green. So he's not got the snooker and not got the green really safe. So nearly a good shot from Judd. Looks pacey. Hand on the table. The way the game is today, we sort of expect players to knock these in. Also get an idea now of how confident Judd's feeling. If he's feeling confident, he'll pot this and hit it soft enough to land on a colour. If not, he might play to get the other side of the ball line. Out comes the green, <coughs> up goes the stock of Maguire. Similar sort of shot for Judd. Play this one a bit more higher on the cue ball. And he played it again, just below centre. Makes the pot that bit tougher. Surprising to play it just plain ball and get the white in behind the green. But that's obviously how he prefers to play them. By missing it thin, he's come back across the table and given a chance for Stephen. <coughs> Depending on whether these two reds behind the black spot pot, he might he might be looking just to sort of swing into them when he pots this red and just free them up a little bit. Yeah, they don't go, so definite value in can into these two reds here. Good pop, just missed the cannon. Caught the loose red as opposed to the, the two together. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate, really. You would have expected to land on a colour of some sort there after that. Stevie just had a look there to see if he can snooker Judd. Obviously he can, no problem, but he knows it's a very easy snooker for Judd to escape from, so can see the, the benefits in taking on this tough yellow. Stephen Maguire, one. More than easy, <coughs> but nor is what he's left Judd. It's a tough part.
Well. Just about went in off the near jaw. I've noticed this week they've been a little bit friendly in that regard. And it certainly helped Trump <coughs> there. Had he potted the red into the middle of the pocket, though, he would have had a much better angle on black to do what he's got to do with the next red. 34 in front, so if he pots the black, 41 ahead with 43 on. But surely more value in laying the snooker, Joe. Yeah, definitely. You would just assume that being 41 ahead with 43 on is a better, better advantage, but, you know, wouldn't be a problem for Stephen to clear off. We did get the chance, so that's definitely the right shot from Judd. But once again, he's just come up a little bit short. Hasn't nailed the brown to the side cushion. So I think he'll be a bit disappointed with that. Once again, he's done neither. Hasn't got the snooker, hasn't got the brown perfectly safe. Just got to be careful here, Stephen, because he's obviously pushing that red over to the bottom right pocket. Just needs to get a good cue ball. It's a friendly kiss in that he's got the white tucked under the ball cushion, but I think we'll see Judd take this one on. promote the brown just a little bit further down that side cushion so a little bit of insurance for Judd Just landed about as awkward as it possibly could have done for Stephen there. Blue's not nice to yellow pocket, not nice to middle. But you feel he needs to part a colour here. This match is not your average. The first six frames, total fluency. Positionally, everything was going right. Big breaks were going in left, right and centre. The last three frames, it's been downright scrappy but these are the trenches these are the frames you have to win I think personally I think I'd like to take this blue into the yellow pocket blue ball Looks the obvious angle to get down onto the red. Stephen Maguire, what? Well, I didn't see that one, but I can definitely see the, the thought behind it. It wasn't the worst thought out shot in the world. It just, it just limits his options now. Putting this last red, he's got to get at least a pink or a black. Well, the brown was just a fraction of an inch away there from dropping in. Had it done so, Maguire would have been 37 behind with 35 on. He would have needed a snooker. So living dangerously. Yeah, could be in for a long, long safety battle now, though, Phil. When there's a ball guard in the pocket, it's always an easy safety shot available to each player. Left a nice, left a nice target now for Judd. Shouldn't have much problem getting this cubal in behind yellow and green. Went for the part. Definitely worth the, definitely worth the risk that was. And the second burst as well. Mm. 
Remember, Maguire can't afford to give away penalty points, has to make contact. Oh, well done, well done. Yeah, no luck in that at all, Phil. Exactly what he played. Perfectly executed. Chad, I'd like to get to the cushion behind the black spot if possible. Obviously, doesn't feel he can get there with enough side to get in behind the red. So, if he's playing this off two cushions, it's very difficult to judge. Escape. He's left the red to green pocket. But it's not difficult for Stephen to land on the pink, which he'll need to be able to win. Digging down on the cue ball, never easy. <coughs> End position of the red for Maguire. Fortunate. Could have gone anywhere. There's an obvious easy safety shot available to Stephen here. Can't do any damage, but if you're looking to play something better than that, you're trying to get Judd in a little bit of trouble. Oh, doesn't want this cue ball going off. Oh, that was a good shot. It was always going to be risky. Had to get the right contact on the red. Played it very nicely. You can feel the tension out there. What a massive frame this is. No distractions. The only game in town now. Yeah, just a containing one from Judd Day. Judd's not the one that needs to take the risks. He's got the 33 point lead. Once again, Stephen looking to get big distance between these balls. And if he can, he'd like to get that red a little bit closer to the brown. Just to limit Judge's choice of shots on his next visit. Just got to be careful. Foul. And that was anything but careful. That's a disaster. He just knew, oh, there you go. Frame conceded, frame. He Good conceded shot. because he left a free ball and a very easy pot. So what a way to end a frame, missing the red completely to leave himself requiring a snooker. And it all went so badly wrong on what seemed like a relatively simple safety. And so Judd Trump leads 5-4. Leads Stephen Maguire 5-4, needs one more frame to complete the quarter-final lineup in the Ladbrokes Players' Championship. Maguire will be seething after losing that one the way he did, missing the red completely to leave himself requiring a snooker. We've just got a little technical issue in the arena at the moment with one of the, the monitors, so there will be a, a slight delay. And that's why Maguire's pacing around there like a, a caged animal, wants to get on with it and Thank you, take this to a decider. Stephen Maguire to break. It really has been a tale of two halves, this. Pre-interval, a jamboree of break building. Afterwards, a lot more safety, a lot more disjointed snooker. And balls rattling as opposed to dropping. 
Well, that was a good effort from Judd, wasn't it? Struck that one nicely. Good shot from Stephen. He had to get over that side of the table, but I still think Judd might be tempted into taking this one on. <laughs> Where's the cue we're going to finish? One. Not too bad. Not sure if the red nearest the black pots into left corner, but the one at the bottom of the pack definitely does, so could play on it or as he likes to do, into the pack. Not very, not, not lucky on this occasion, I don't think. Six. Judd Trump, six. Fractions before the interval. Probably would have landed nicely on that red. All about fractions, this game. Trump, of course, trying to cope with the additional pressure of being the defending champion. And he has successfully defended a, a ranking title this season already. Last season, went to Romania, won the European Masters. This season, that tournament was played in Belgium, but it produced the, the same outcome. Away, please. And he would love to be a back-to-back -back Players' Championship winner as well. First things first, though, get through the initial hurdle. Yeah, I know he's, he's missed a few after the interval today, Judd, but he's, you have to admire his temperament today. He's really dug in. He's, you know, he's played a few loose shots, especially for a player of his quality, but he hasn't sort of worried about it. He's just got on with the next shot. Very good composure today. He has good composure and also a level-headed approach, and I think that's something he needs to take forward. If he's like this in every match he plays, he becomes formidable. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can't always go into every match and just win every frame of a century break. These things happen. This game's tough. You get a lot of scrappy games. So it's all about handling it and holding yourself together, having the patience to deal with whatever comes your way. look at Ronnie O'Sullivan last night, his safety play was, as Clive Everton said, relentless, mesmerisingly good. Yeah, I think it all, it all comes from whether you enjoy that side of the game or not. Some players just can't stand it. They just want to get in the balls and get at them. But if you embrace it and enjoy the safety, you get a lot of pleasure out of it. must also make the point that if Maguire does lose this match, either in this frame or the next, he will go to the China Open under a lot of pressure to earn plenty of points to try and avoid qualification for the World Championship. So there's a double-edged sword for him here, not just getting to the quarterfinals of this event, but piling up those ranking points. And players in that equation for World Championship qualification in and around Maguire. People like Ryan Day, Mark Allen, and plenty of others will be watching this with interest. 
may be lending silent support to Mr. Trump. I noticed on the list, actually, that Mr. Perry is 21st on that list, so maybe your impartiality could be in question here. Yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm not rooting for anyone here. Just, but no, it's, I think some of the, the actual players that are real safe in the top 16 will be sort of slightly hoping that the likes of Steve Maguire and Mark Allen and Ryan Day qualify by right, because they won't want to be drawing them first round at the Crucible. But unfortunately, can't all be there. Once again, good safety from Judd. Ditto Maguire. Yeah, I wasn't 100% sure all them reds were going, but Cuba went exactly the right path in which he intended. This red just to the right, near this right corner pocket, just causing a slight problem. Anything caught thick, and these safeties collide into that red. This looks good from Judd, just blocking off the left-hand side of the table. A fraction too thin. Possible chance here for Stephen. Very thin clip. Possible shot to nothing. We've got a little bit of a guide from the red above it. And if this was a poker hand, the stakes have just been increased with the red going so close to the corner pocket like that. Intense snooker, this. It was bish bash bosh before the interval. A total contrast since. Yeah, you can see down that last camera angle we had, you've got blue, pink and green there. We're providing some sort of defence with this red over the pocket, but... Judd's not got the line right this time. I think he might have had a bit of luck here. Stephen can pot this red. He's going to have to just bend it slightly around that first red. But what that means is that White is then going to be heading towards the pack of reds. So not good this for Stephen. One. He played. Left himself a horrible shot here, though. This is a big shot. Absolutely right. The definition of a pressure ball is a big reward if he gets it, potentially. Stephen Maguire. Oh, lots, One. That was a tough shot. Lots of pressure on that shot. But. Could have been worse. The double kiss on the black has not only just nudged it towards the cushion, but it's left this red missable for Judd. One. <coughs> yeah, just run a bit too far again. The balls are just not playing games now, they're just just making it tough for the players. Joe Trump. Just finishing what? in awkward positions all the time. And I think the way the last few frames have gone tells us just how important this match is for both of them. It means a great deal. Just 
looking just to nestle into this pack here. Anything. Be unlucky to leave a red if he lands somewhere on top of that bunch of reds. But as you can see, the way he's shaping up, can't see too far down that side cushion, so we have to apply a lot of side to create the angle. Wow, and a miss. Judge Trump for. It's judgment. He left a possible pot here for Judd. This red next to the blue into the yellow pocket, but doesn't seem to be even looking at it. Back. Surprising. Definite opportunity there to pot that red and leave the white on green, pink, or brown. Yes, minimal movement of the pink there with the green. So Ben Williams, the referee having to return just a couple of balls to their original positions, the cue ball and the green. OK, turn this way. Obviously it was too big a swerve last time, yeah. so different route this time for Stephen. Just like to just get into the, the right hand side of this big bunch of reds. I can just fall into that. No shot available for Judd, but it's just how to get there. This is better. Yep, absolutely perfect. Good shot. Touching ball. Lot has been made with Judd Trump over the years about one comment he came out with saying he loved to play naughty snooker. Well, this afternoon he's played real snooker, hard man snooker, and for that he should be applauded regardless of the result. Yeah, I think it's just something that comes into your game without actually taking too much notice of it. As the years go by, you realise there's a lot more to this game than just making big breaks. And like I say, I said earlier on, I think Judd's in that department has definitely improved this season. I've seen a notable difference in him. Turns the odd one or two down now in favour of a good safety shot. So he's becoming the all-round complete player. OK, that was a mistake, but it was the, the sensible thing to do. Just not the quite spot-on execution he wanted. No, he's missed that one, missed it on the thin side, so he's come back up the table. Opening for Judd. Not a great chance, the way the balls are sitting and the colours, but it's nice to be at the table potting balls when you only want one frame for victory. One. Yes, abandoned naughty snooker, so will he get rewarded for good behaviour? Yeah, he really would like very quickly to get in nice and tight behind the black ball here and get it back on its spot. A few shots away from doing that yet. Four. But once that black's back on the spot, all of a sudden this table looks a lot more inviting. Five.
Yeah, just having a look now if you can get down. Because the black's not that easy a part. He doesn't want to be doing too much with a cue ball when he pots it. So looking two or three shots ahead here, Judd. Ten. Eleven. No, I don't think... Sixteen. I haven't got much choice now, really, unless he can stun up between the two reds. And that tells us that he's going to... Seven no intention two. of getting the black back on the spot now. He's going to try and win this frame of match with the blue. But we know how difficult that is. Keep getting the right side of the blue is not easy. He can see enough of the red closest to the blue. This is a queuing shot, and it could be the decisive blow. 22. Lovely, lovely stuff. Yeah, good pressure pot, that one. Keep the break going. Now, again, got the opportunity to play for the black here. 28. It's whether he feels he can just do enough off the blue. 29. It does help when you've got the cue power Judd's got. A lot of players wouldn't have been able to just punch that up there for the blue, but seems to do it with ease. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. So probably looking for one more precise positional shot or cannon, as the case may be. And that looks just about perfect. <laughs> yeah, he's done well today, Judd. Had a little bad spell in the middle of the match, Four. lost his way completely, but stuck with it. Very good show of his temperament today. 41. And I think if he does win 6-4, which looks highly likely now, he'll gain more from this than winning 6-1 in a canter. Yeah, definitely, because he's, he's probably lost a few matches like this this season, where he's just lost his way a little bit and he's been punished, but he's stuck to the task 46. today. This, this bodes well for the rest of the tournament. You can see he's in good form 47. before the interval, knocking breaks in for fun. It shows that he's up for the fight as well. It's always nice to see. And Joe, you called 6-4. How about that? Yeah, but we won't talk about 52. what I said about the other match. 53. And this sets up a real heavyweight bout between two snooker southpaws. Judd Trump. And Neil Robertson. Sixty. Sixty-one. He started with a century. Can he finish with one? Sixty-eight. Sixty-nine. Oh, it's a shame. Probably won't see a century now. Always nice to see Judd finish off 76. the colours at the end. Gives the fans something to look at. Plenty of flare shots. It'll be, it'll be chuffed to bits. 
He'll be chuffed a bit with his performance today. Not not so much the performance in terms of making breaks and missing balls, but the way he stuck to the task. Maguire concedes. Trump was magic in the first half. He was mature in the second half. And Trump's approval rating here in Landudno has gone through the roof. Well, um, how much would you love to defend that title, Judd? It would be good. I think um, it's always a, a great achievement to, to do back-to-back -to -back tournaments. So I think I've only done it once before, so it would be a nice um, confidence boost before the World Championship as well, I think. Um, I'm playing OK in patches, but I feel like as soon as I do miss, it kind of collapses a little bit, I think, and um, I need to get away, get away from that um, and just kind of trying to forget the next ball and just trying to go out and play, but it's just not quite happening at the moment. What was great to see today was both sides of Judd Trump. So we saw you play your uh, attacking game in amongst the balls, building your breaks, but also playing a canny game as well against uh, Stephen. Yeah, I'm trying to. I think um, I feel confident against him. I think um, the last couple of times I've beaten him, and I, and I think he said after the last time I beat him, I was very lucky. I always, I always get lucky against him. So I feel like just going to the pack, and I always seem to finish on one against him, and it kind of gets on his nerves. So. I think I play a little bit of a different game against him. I kind of try and smash the pack open, and I think uh, the way I, my style just kind of gets to him sometimes, I think. I think you make your own luck in this one, mm. uh, Judd. Let's take a look at how you actually won this match. It was a game of two halves. Let's see the closing few frames where, where we'd seen you off to an absolute flyer earlier on. I thought this was actually a big moment in the match because you could have gone 5-3 down. I thought that was a great escape, actually, you know. I was in a bit of trouble, though. Mm. If I hit that wrong, I could have probably left them all and been 5-3 yeah. down at that point. And you went on to win the frame. And... At this point, you were both not feeling good, I think, out mm. there. When it, it, two or three frames in a row, you're both making mistakes, but it was important you finish off the match like this, didn't you? I mean, you finished well, it strongly in the end. I, th I think that was a big frame to go 5-3 or 4-4. Four, four. I think if, if he obviously mm. went 5-3, it was all over, really. And even this shot, I just tried to smash into the pack, which I probably wouldn't play all the time. It's just uh, Against well, Stephen, I just get a bit of extra confidence. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a great player. And I always know that I've got to play well, and I think that helps me rather than play some of the other players. I think the other thing as well, Jill, is that it, it, best 11 is completely different, isn't it? Mm. You, you can't play well for the whole match. You might do that a couple of times what in your you life, yeah. but you're going to have ebb and flow. Yeah, it's, it's such a long game, I think. Um, I can sort of reel frames off three or four, but when it gets to five or six frames yeah, in a row, it's starts. Nice. It? Yeah, you, d you do miss once or, or twice, and... You've got to get over that. And the game reminds you, doesn't it? It's yeah. not that easy sometimes. No. Yeah. I mean, you've got this, this run-up now. You've got this tournament, and, of course, you're not in China. You didn't qualify. I know that that might turn out to be a blessing in disguise. This tournament's a big one, and the World Championships gives you a bit of time in between to get yourself ready for Sheffield. Is that how you see it? Yeah, I think I'm um, actually quite happy to be out mm. of China for once. I think um, every year, for sort of the last seven or eight years, I've been in it. So... I think it's a different kind of thing for me. I think the last couple of years going into the World Championship, I've been sort of one of the favourites, been yeah. playing the best snooker both times, and this time it's completely different. So yeah. hopefully for me, I can go in with less expectation. I think when I do do well, it's kind of when everyone forgets about me yeah. after I'm on a bad run and I kind of come out of nowhere and do well. Mm. I think, though, if you play like you did in the first couple of frames here, you'll not be floating under the radar in Sheffield. This no. was you know, sublime to watch, wasn't it, Neil? I was in the commentary box, these four frames. I don't think I've seen four better frames than these. And, you know, I'm, even on the, other, the flip side, Steve Maguire, you know, he made a, a 129 break and I think he missed one ball, but you looked devastating early, really sharp, I thought. Yeah, I felt good in, um, in, in Romania last week and I, f I feel good here. I'm just trying to just speed up my play and I think sometimes... I, I'm a bit too cautious, and I think my best is when I literally get down and hit the ball. I don't even feather the ball, really. I, in practice, I've been starting to do that, and everything's going in. And w when I don't think at all, then I seem to play my best. You sort of, sorry, you sort of hinted off here that, that the conditions changed a, a touch after the interval. I, I felt it was very heavy. I, I think it started off OK, but it, it felt like the air con or something was on there in the middle of winter or, or something. I get, I get cold really easy compared to some of the other players. And well, like physically or you feel the table's cold? No, I'm physically cold and my hands get really cold and I kind of lose my touch. I, I can't get through the ball as well as when I'm a little bit hotter. I mean, we saw you with the, the cup of hot water trying mm. to keep your hands warm. Yeah, I, I always get really cold hands and I just can't get through the ball. And I, 
Mm. Obviously, when you're, you're kept away for a little bit and I come back to the table, I just, with my cue action, I kind of decelerate a lot of times. And um, it's good on a really reactive table. It doesn't matter. But when you, you're playing on heavy tables, the ball kind of decelerates by the time it gets there. So I think that's um, a big downfall I've got. When you're playing like you were in those first few frames, you know, 11 second average shot, 99% pot success. It's like watching Ronnie when he's on form. What does that feel like? I can't imagine what it must be. It's like you're floating around the table. Well, the only difference is Ronnie keeps up for six frames, I keep up for two. <laughs> I think in, in, in practice I can keep that up all day, but I think, um, yeah, it, it, I, need, I need the table to help me a little bit. My, he cues the ball just that bit better, so on, on heavier tables he can get through the ball better. I think if the, when I get perfect conditions in a tournament, then I start making 12, 13 centuries and I can kind of breeze through it. What about your next opponent that you're playing, Neil Robertson? You've had lots of big matches with him, you know, going back to when you knocked him out of the World Championship when he was defending champion, played in the Masters, lots of big games. And he mm. played well the other night, so what are your thoughts? I think um, yeah, Neil's another one. He, he's kind of looking for confidence as well, I think. Um, it's always a tough game. We all seem yeah. to meet in the, in the big events yeah. at, at crucial stages. So I think um, for Neil, he's kind of coming back to form. I'm, I'm trying to find some form. It's going to be a tough game, I think. Um, kind of similar to Steve Maguire, you know it's going to be a tough one. Yeah. But that's the nature of this tournament. You've got the 16 most informed players on the circuit. You are Every game's going to be tough. Stephen was tough. Neil will be tough. Um, what do you do between now and then? We've got Ronnie up tonight. Will you keep an eye on that one? I'll probably keep an eye on it, just just go and relax. I think um, I've always had a good run here. I kind of enjoy being up here and it's a re very relaxing place to be, I think, and it uh, seems yeah. to bring the best out of me and hopefully the same this time. Look forward to seeing you in action. Tomorrow afternoon you're up against uh, Neil Robertson. Uh, and earlier on table two we saw Anthony McGill. He was up against John Higgins. He beat him 6-0. This is what he said afterwards. And so I know you've seen a lot of John this season. Nice to get one over him. Yeah, you know, I've been four times, well, that was the fifth time, and he's beat me the previous four, so I didn't want to lose again, so I'm really happy. What sort of game was it in general? Because we didn't see an awful lot of it, but tell us from your perspective. I, I know you won 6-0, but you weren't totally happy with your performance. No, it was a scrappy game. It was, uh, I, I don't think I would play them. I don't, I don't think I really played any better than John, but for some reason, I just kept on and nicking the frames. It's a strange old game, isn't it? Because you can play like really well and sort of lose games, and then you don't play so well, and you like you win six 0 we'll, we'll go figure that. Eh? No, no, it's just you know, it's a, it's, there's there's no rhyme or reason sometimes to snicker, you know. But um, season going forward, still got to go to China. Then the World Championships coming. It's been a busy time, isn't it? How are you dealing with it? Yeah, it's been really busy lately. Um, so I've been I've been entering everything as well, um, even the smaller ones, and. Uh, it's, I can really feel it, you know. It's, but it's, you know, it's only this is three tournaments to go, so one one big push, you know. Sean Murphy next up. How you fancy that? Yeah, just the same as today, isn't it? Just a hard game, but hopefully I can just try and make it hard fun. Go and do the same again. Well played. Hope so. Cheers. Anthony McGill, good win, six nil over uh, Johnny. Does he's talking on the table, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. I mean, look, I, I, just looking at the draw there a couple of minutes ago, I'm really pleased for him. You know, he. Um, He's got a burning desire to be at this stage of these big events, and he's been in them. He's just not managed to put a lot of wins together yet in them. You know. He should be absolutely delighted to beat John Higgins because mm. he lost four times in this season. Last week, he lost about three times already this year to him. So mm. for him to get on the right side of John and beat him 6 0 is good for this tournament because he's not lost to John again. And also, next time he plays him, he's on the back of beating him, not losing to him. So he must be thrilled. He didn't sound it, but I'm sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's in some great company now into the quarterfinals. Yeah. Be interested to hear what John Higgins made of his performance today because he was, we saw it was on the other table, but we could see he was at the table a lot. But, some tight frames just got away from him. And I think that actually the last shot he played of the match, which I don't think we've seen, but he um, he got frustrated and it was most on John Higgins' light. He uh, lashed out at one from about 50 in front and Ants uh, cleaned him up from there. It was it was unlike John today, but you know what happens at this level? The great level of this game, you know. I mean, so. you know, he's beaten Ronnie 5-0 and he won, beat him again the other week to win the Welsh and now he's on the receiving end of a whitewash. That's snooker for you. And next up for Anthony, Sean Murphy, yeah. Friday afternoon. Well, we know that Sean Murphy's got issues with his uh, neck problems and his back problems, so this is a real chance for Anthony McGill to, um, to go deep in this tournament. Well, he beat Karen Wilson 6 3. He looked very, very classy. Yeah, he? he's not right, though. I mean, yeah. I think he admits that, so, and he missed the last two tournaments, so, you know, who knows? It's, it's a chance for, for his opponent. All right, well, uh, one man to beat this week will certainly be Ronnie O'Sullivan. He beat Graham.